So in this video, I'm going to go over the generic layout I used and how I set up my tablet and uh, what apps I think are important. Um, again, this is all user preference, what you are going to have to use the most and what you want up on your screen is up to you. Uh, this is just what worked for me. Um, so here in the bottom, we have what we call the nav bar buttons. There's um, basically something that you can upload into the kernel and that will allow that these buttons to always be on the bottom, which is really important because it allows you to change um, you know your music tracks or if you want to your volume even though mine will be OEM volume controlled But it can um, do all your music tracks. It can you know keep uh, your home buttons down here your app button down there um, It's pretty helpful and one of the key things I think to the install um, again. It's nav bar. It's uh, free once you get the kernel There's um, some links to download that um, but going into the layout itself um, I got this from another AcroZine member. Um, I can put his link down to give him a, a thank you for doing this, but just a quick Photoshop. Um, he gave me just kind of the blank background with the Acura and with the, the red um, layering here and the stitching. Um, generic form. Uh, all the icons and text I did myself. Um, I found some kind of some old school icon app and I was able to pull all the icons I wanted. So. The screen itself is just a layout, uh, layover, which is the stitching, and then these blank rows um, with the Acura symbol, the clock I added, uh, the icons I added, the text I added, and I picked all the font and the size and the shape and everything um, that would work for me and what I thought um, would be the most useful apps for me. So going through the apps themselves, um, I can go through here real quick. So Amazing Text Free is kind of a big one. Um, what I do is you have these text boxes and so you overlay these text boxes over every icon and every text and what that does is it gives you an area to, to touch so if I'm gonna click the music I gotta click on it right in the middle and wherever I put that box so it um, allows you to put these um, basically invisible boxes over to touch um, to make the, the screen uh, touch sensitive um, so that was amazing text free um, Audio Glow is kind of a cool thing. It shows kind of these music bars when your music playing. It's just kind of a cool factor. Um, Auto Hide Soft Key is what I used before I found the nav bar button. So um, this basically, once you touch the top or the bottom, it showed uh, basically all the buttons that show now. But I don't need that now that I have the nav bar going. Um, Auto Bright is a pretty cool app. Um, it allows you to set the brightness based on time of day. Um, so if you use the automatic dimming settings, it will go in and out based on street lights and how the lighting is in the car, but Auto Bright sets it so you set the brightness for the time of day. So for example, right now I have it as 353, um, it, it changes settings, um, so you can set the max brightness, the min brightness, um, the fade duration, the sunrise and sunset offset, but basically this allows you to override the default settings, which is pretty important in my mind. Um, so you're not getting the screen dimming in and out based on street lights and other stuff in the car. Um, the next thing is um, Beautiful Widgets. I believe I used that for the clock you saw on the home screen. Um, the next one I use, EasyCat Viewer is what I use for the reverse camera. Um, that's a pretty simple setup. Um, so Gone Mad Music Player is the music player I ended up going with. Um, I tried Rocket Player, I tried the generic Google one, I tried a very, a couple of them, um, some various programs, and I found that Gone Mad Music Player actually worked the best. It was most consistent with the setup in the car. Um, when I used Rocket Player, I had a lot of problems getting the playlist to work, so every time the tablet started back up, the playlist would have to get reloaded, and that's not good for a clean OEM-like setup because you had to keep loading the playlist. So Gone Mad Music Player is something that I found worked the absolute best. I'm very happy with it. I think it's a great interface. They continuously improve it. Um, it's very simple. It gets all the playlists, um, and it's you know it's a pretty nice uh, music program. Um, so the next one. Um, so GPS status and GPS tests. I use these to test the GPS signal. And like I said before, um, I had problems getting a good GPS signal until I bought that uh, GPS signal booster. And so these allowed me to test real time, you know, how the GPS was doing. So those I just used to test out how the GPS is. Um, what I use for um, navigation without data is NavMe. Um, right now I'm one of the beta testers for um, their user program. So um, we test out, you know, the functionality of it and we see how it works and then we try to improve the program as we can. Um, I like it so far. Um, the biggest thing for me using the least data as possible was 
uh, the navigation program and I chose this one after testing maybe six or so um, this one's very nice because you can type in your own search things whereas some other ones such as Sigic which I really think has the best gra uh, user interface the graphics um, when you do a search there you have to search by exact address in a certain order so you got to put city state uh, address street zip code things like that and it was really really like a bothersome this one's nice because you can type in pretty much anything you want so for example let's do um, subway so it's nice because it kind of gives you um, you can type in the name of the restaurant rather than the address because if you're looking for a place in an area you don't know you're not gonna know the address and then you have to look it up on Google and it just takes longer than it should so this one I really like because the search was really nice the user interface was very nice, um, so that's the one I ended up going with. Um, let's go back to the apps. So that was NavMe. Maps.me was another one I liked, but it wasn't as good as NavMe, so I went with NavMe. Uh, next song is kind of cool. It's a smaller app, um, but what it does is anytime um, I do a music feature, and right now I'm not tied to my USB drive, so it's probably not going to work. But next song, what it does is as soon as there's an input to the music player, such as next song, pause, play, um, stop, what it does, it shows a tiny little notification here that says what the song is. So even though your music player is playing in the background, anytime it, the song changes or you pause it, it'll show the song name up here, which I thought was kind of cool, um, just to show you what's playing uh, real quick. So I like that one. Um, so Nova settings, what I use is my launcher. This is how I created the background here um, with the invisible uh, uh, cat, uh, individual caddies for um, each app. So I use Nova Launcher to kind of distinguish um, how the layout is and the, the widget drawers and all that. Um, let's see, what else did I use? Um, Power Amp's another one I tried, which worked pretty well but there were just some little issues that I didn't end up liking um, set orientation uh, this one just basically orients certain apps in certain orientations um, for example Instagram usually comes out portrait and you can't do landscape so I force Instagram to come out landscape it doesn't look always that great but it works for the time being um, Sigic is another uh, navigation one I have but user interface is very nice but like I said the search feature is kind of um, a little bit bothersome a little bit difficult. Um, terminal emulator, that one I use um, if I ever need to run some commands um, to the uh, Android system itself I can use that. Oops. Um, then going into Torque, Torque Pro, um, like, uh, like I mentioned in one of other install videos, um, I have that hardwired in and uh, this comes up if I want to uh, look at any codes or if I want to watch my uh, engine performance statistics, I can pull that up, so that's pretty simple. Um, TWRP is something you have to do when you do a uh, Timur's kernel. Um, this allows you to create recovery drives and recovery files and reinstall stuff, so that thing's pretty helpful. Um, VCAM2 came with uh, the kernel, but I don't use it. I didn't get it to work very well, so uh, nothing about that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, so navigation up, or traffic up here is database Google Maps. Navigation is a data, uh, no data required navigation app. Music is Gone Mad Music Player. Vehicle is Torque Pro. Browser is uh, Chrome. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, Pandora, those are all standard. Um, apps shows me my apps. And um, settings is just you know your generic settings for Android. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, oh, and then one other thing is I hid some commands in here. So if I hit the center of the accuracy symbol, it shows me Power Event Manager, which gives you a lot of um, characteristics of um, how everything's performing. If I hit the bottom of the Acura, it takes me into my uh, Google Play Store. Uh, if I hit the top of the Acura, it gives me my contacts, which I imported from my Apple phone. Uh, pretty simple to do through iTunes. Um, and then down here in the corner is just where I pull up uh, my email uh, accounts. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, pretty helpful apps. These ones work for me. Uh, there's probably other ones that work best for you. Um, but maybe there's some suggestions or ideas that can help you out. So uh, that's pretty much it.